So when trying to figure out an advanced Ichimoku strategy, I actually turned to Sherlock Holmes on this one. If you notice, unlike most detectives, when Sherlock Holmes would go to a crime scene, he wasn't always just looking for the presence of certain items or pieces of evidence. He was often more interested in the absence of certain pieces of evidence. In other words, let's not focus on what's here. Let's focus on what is not here. And I've taken that same approach to the Ichimoku cloud system to hopefully try and determine just which pieces, if any, are still worth using in modern day trading. Stay with me here. So last week I told you the basics of Ichimoku, what the pieces do and how to put it all together. And for a lot of beginners especially, I think this was very helpful um, in giving you an actual all-in-one system that you can use right now and really make a big jump from brand new beginner into somebody that actually has a plan in place and more importantly has a disciplined plan in place. I'm really a big fan of this for that reason. Uh, but in the end, this system is only going to get you so far. And if we're going to move on to the pro level someday, we need more out of this. So in this video, what we're going to do, do a quick review of what we just talked about last week. Then we're going to take apart the Ichimoku system piece by piece and try to figure out which pieces work the best. Is there something here that we can use in the algorithms and trading systems that we're putting together on this channel right now? Or is there nothing? Is there absolutely nothing here that we can use? Stay tuned to find out. So a quick review. Now, if you have not watched the video from last week where I go over the basic parts of Ichimoku and you don't know what the basic parts are or how to actually trade it, go watch the video. Why are you watching the sequel before the original? Um, I'm going to put a little card up in the upper right-hand corner right now. Click it. Go there. You're going to be with us here anyway for a while. So go there now, watch it, and then come right back here. But for the rest of us, uh, what I said in that video, if you recall, is that this really is a good all-in-one strategy for beginners. Um, I, I've already said it in this video. I can't say it enough. I really like it for that reason, uh, regardless if you use the Chiku Span or if you don't. I myself actually used this strategy exclusively for about six months. I didn't do anything else. I really gave it a go because I liked it that much. Um, but what I found out um, no matter how deep you really get into it, you're going to want to move on from using this thing exclusively at some point in time. There are clear limitations to this system, and if you really want to max out your potential in Forex trading, you're going to have to move beyond it. Now, the way I explained it to somebody before was almost like giving you a basic strategy in chess to where most people don't have a strategy. They know how to play, um, but they never took the time to really put a structured strategy in place. So chances are you're probably going to be able to beat just about everyone you know. So you can go from a total beginner to the best player on your block in a really short amount of time just by having a basic strategy in place. But will this get you ranked? Absolutely not. You're going to need more. Now, more specifically, what I mean by this is Ichimoku forces you to use a system of indicators that were all created around the 1930s. That's pretty limiting. All right, let's go over what the people who have been with this channel for a long time and have tested all these indicators out and tried to put a system together. They'll all tell you the same thing. First off, most indicators you test are not very effective at all. Some of them are ridiculously bad. Um, but if you just keep searching and testing over time, you're going to find ones that are amazing. The people out there that hate on indicators have never taken the time to actually find the good ones. And it's their loss. I'm glad they don't get to reap the benefits. They were lazy. They probably tried three or four of the really bad ones and then just said, to hell with them. You know, they're all terrible. So that type of thinking will get you nowhere. You've really got to dig in and put in the work, and when you do, really great things can happen, and the followers of this channel are finding that out right now or already have found this out along the way. But then you have to put them all together, 
and doing that, even if you have really good indicators on hand, that doesn't always mean they play well together. You have to find the right combination. And this takes a whole other process. And finding the right indicators and then finding the right combination of those indicators results in a system that is one in 10,000, one in 100,000, maybe even more. Um, so that's pretty rare and it takes a long time to get there. So if somebody out of the blue is just going to say, hey, use these four or five indicators and use them all together and it's going to work really well. And by the way, it's 1930 and there's no computers. This is not going to be the best way to go when there's much better choices out there in modern day. Uh, this being said, I'm amazed at how well it works in spite of all this. Uh, but nowadays, we need to get in there and strip it for parts and disassemble the whole thing and find out which pieces actually have a chance of making the system that we are putting together today. Can any of these pieces make the final cut? Now, I need to do a little preemptive strike here, as I always do when I'm talking about indicators. I am going to be eliminating and finding fault with some of these pieces that you probably really like. Now, if you are using these pieces and using them a certain way and finding great results with them over and over again, then you would have no reason to be upset at me. You're making a ton of money. Who cares what anybody else thinks? But like I said, I have used this system exclusively for a while and I dug deep on all these pieces and I am about to share with you my findings. But even before we do that, I have to dispel a couple of other notions before we move on because I know it's coming in the YouTube comment section. It always does. So here are the pieces we spoke about last week. These are the main pieces of Ichimoku. Yes, I actually spelled Tenkensen correctly, and I think I forgot the dash here. Who cares? Anyway, please understand that at the end of the day, these things are no more than relatively simple mathematical equations that create lines on a screen. All right? I see a lot of people everywhere talk about, ooh, unlock the secrets of the Chiku span or the Ichimoku system in general. There's no secrets to unlock, okay? I don't know, I don't know where this came from, but so many people over glamorize this and treat it different than uh, what it actually is. And maybe it's just because like if you watch 80s movies or if you grew up in that time, like Asian and Native American mysticism was like a really big thing. And it just had a way of explaining every stupid plot line in these movies. And somehow people have carried this over to Forex trading. I see this everywhere and I only see it with Ichimoku. I mean, look, <laughs> these are not infinity stones, right? These are lines on a screen, nothing more. Please stop making them something they are not. And also, I need to address this guy because I, th I think here more than anywhere, there are so many different routes you can go with Ichimoku and so many different combinations and ways you can twist and turn it. Please understand, guy who has a super complex, convoluted way of trading this, I am not going to talk about the way you trade Ichimoku, um, but I am not missing the boat as a result. This happens every time I do an indicator video. Clearly you don't get it because you're not trading it this fucked out way. Okay. I, as usual, will be going over the most common ways people use these pieces. And then we will do what we often do here and play the elimination game. Most Forex trading channels will tell you that every tool out there is amazing and has actual real uses behind it, which is complete nonsense. And that's why nobody has a clear direction. That's why people end up with this huge basket of tools that don't really work. Just like with Sherlock Holmes, it is not the presence. It is not what is there. It's what needs to not be there. So let's get into this. Again, here are the main pieces. You have the two that act like moving average crossovers. You have the two that make the cloud. Then you got that little wild card over there with the Chiku span. So let's talk about this one first, because even in basic Ichimoku strategy, some people use this, some people do not. So I want to go to my charts and just kind of isolate it and show you how you can test it yourself. Of course, we're not going to have time to test it on a lot of pairs and a lot of different ways, but just on the most commonly traded currency pair in the world on the daily chart, which is what we trade. Let's see how this thing performs. Okay, so like I said before, when you put the whole system on a chart, it gets pretty messy. So let's eliminate everything but the Chiku Spana. We are on the Euro dollar daily chart. 
And you can't trade this thing in real time because, as you can see, price is way ahead of where it actually is. So what most people will do is combine this with another tool. They will kind of use it the same way that you use the Kumo Cloud to where if we want to take a long, we look back and said, okay, is the Chiku span above or below price? It's above, well, it's okay, we can take a long now. If it was down here, you would not. Now, I'm sure there are other ways to use this thing, but this is the way that most people use in their trading. They either use it in the beginner's basic strategy version of Ichimoku, or they try to just isolate this piece and use it with other indicators that they like. And this makes sense. You do want to be in the overall prevailing trend. Um, I, it's not something I can really show you on a chart because there's too much separation between where price actually is and where the indicator sits. Um, but trust me, I like the obscure. I want to take the most obscure piece of this whole system and see what I can do with it. And I gave it a run and it just didn't give me good enough results. There's no way to really show you that on a chart. Um, and you are free to go test this on your own and see what kind of results you get. But I can just say from going in deep on this thing, it gave me no real advantage. It kept me out of too many trades that I wanted to enter and just didn't eliminate enough losers, which was the main goal I was after in the first place. So we are going to have to eliminate this from the equation. All right, so where should we go next? Let's go to the pieces that make up the cloud. I mentioned in last week's video, these lines on their own aren't really significant. I mean, it's the cloud they form that's important, but there are a couple ways that people trade the cloud. Now there's actually far more than a couple, but there's three main ways that people will trade the actual cloud part of the system. The first one is just basic strategy. Like we talked about before, is price above the cloud? Well, great. You can only take longs. Is it below the cloud? Well, good. You can only take shorts at this point. That's fine. Um, but when it comes to other ways people try to use this, you have two other methods. The first one is the what I call the cloud predictor. You will notice on your chart, and we're going to see this when we go back to my charts, that the cloud actually goes beyond where price is right now. The cloud part of Ichimoku will give you a positive color and a negative color. And when you look beyond price and you see the cloud as a certain color, let's say it's negative, that is the cloud telling you the price is going to stay negative for a while. Now, if that cloud flips from positive to negative or negative to positive, that is the cloud attempting to predict a change in the direction of price and people try to use this Now we will absolutely take a look at this on our charts but there's also another method that I've noticed a lot of people use when using the actual cloud part and that is taking the lines that make the cloud and waiting for price to break out kind of a sort of uh, some type of dynamic support and resistance line so I'd imagine people use them for reversals too, but mostly for breakouts from what I've seen. So let's start with the actual breakout. Um, go back to our charts and just isolate the cloud and let's do the same thing we did with the Chiku span and see how this thing actually works. So same chart, same time frame, just isolating the cloud. And let's look at look for breakouts. So price went into the cloud here, tried breaking out here and then went right back into the cloud. That was a fail. Then it broke out again. And once again, you would have tried to sell at the bottom because the very next day it shot right back up. There was another loss. This might have been a small win. And then this was a pretty good little breakout. I'll give you that. Um, nothing for a while. Did not officially break out right here because price never closed above. And that's what we always look for when we test for indicators. Not did it break above and you just get trigger happy and jumping along right here. You got to wait and see if it closed and it did not. So you saved yourself there. And the next breakout was this candle right here. And that was a very good trade. So a couple winners, couple of losers, not much here until it just broke out right now. You would have entered here and you would currently be losing. We'll see how that whole thing plays out. But again, not enough winners compared to losers. There's really nothing special here. And again, this is one example. 
but when you go test this yourself, and if you really want to disagree with me and you strongly want to trade this way, I suggest you do it. You may end up finding something that I don't, but I have put in the time and put in the work on this. And I'm telling you right now, what you're normally going to get is the same results we just saw right here with the breakouts. Now, if you're actually trading reversals, you might have done quite a bit better. Nice little reversal there, and then one right there. I don't know how you manage success and failure when you're trading reversals, but trading reversals is something we do not do here. If you're new to the channel, I'm going to put the video in the description as to why we don't do that because I don't care how well it works right here. If you are a reversal trader at all, you are just begging for it. So I'm not going to count that here, and the breakout just didn't give us the results we wanted to often enough. So we are going to have to say goodbye to the breakout portion of the cloud. Not something I recommend. Uh, but this predictor thing might have legs. I mean, how many indicators out there try to tell you what's gonna happen in the future, like exactly what's gonna happen? Not many. I mean, many of them run on past data. So uh, let's see if the crystal ball indicator actually exists. So same chart, and I just expand it out so you can kind of see the whole thing here. Uh, but you'll notice that this was this pinkish color, which is their bearish cloud. And they are trying to tell us that things are going to flip positive over time. We will see about that. But in the past, every time it tried to flip positive, it was wrong. Right here, it flipped positive. Price kept going down for a while. It eventually came back up a little bit. Um, but then right when it started to do that, it said negative again. It actually did. For a minute, it said positive, and it turned out to be wrong. Things flipped negative again. And you're going to find this a lot when dealing with trends. Because remember, you didn't see this flip positive here. You saw it pretty much back here. And things still had a long way to go down retrace and then go down further. You know, when this finally did flip negative again, you were somewhere back here. This is really something that's hard to test in hindsight for this very reason, but there are ways to do it. And I encourage you to try because I was super excited about this. I would love to have had something that would have given me the future direction of price. I mean, how great would that be? But an indicator cannot go into the future and do that because as the people who follow this channel know, what actually moves price is the big banks reacting to trader sentiment and then major news events. And this cloud cannot account for those things. At the end of the day, like every indicator out there, it is a mathematical equation and nothing more. There are no mystical secrets to unlock here. I tried, believe me. Again, you're welcome to test this out for yourself, but I did on many different pairs, many different time frames, and I just didn't come out with enough positive results to make me want to stay with this. And then logically, it just doesn't add up either. So unfortunately, the prediction element of the cloud, which had so much potential when you first saw it, just isn't going to help you down the line. So what does that leave? That leaves the method we used with the cloud in last week's video. Simply having it there to tell us, okay, if price is below me, you can only take shorts. If price is above me, you can only take longs. Using it from that aspect, from a discipline aspect, to only keep us in trades that are actually with the prevailing trend. I mean, that's really good for beginners to keep them only in the most optimal trades out there. But what about for the rest of us? Let's go take a look. Now, this time we are at the Japanese yen, uh, the second most popular traded pair on planet Earth. And I just put it here because it's a much cleaner, easier chart to see than if I did this on the euro dollar, but you can do this on the euro dollar too. Now, what we do when we trade basic Ichimoku strategy is if we want to go long, we wait for the red to cross the blue upward while price is already over the cloud. And then conversely, we do the same for shorts. If price is below the cloud, we wait for the red to cross the blue, and then that's how we enter. Now, the cloud is there to keep us in the really good trades. Problem is, on this entire chart, 
going all the way back to December 2018. So let's see, it's June now. So about a seven month sample size. We only got one trade and that trade was right here going long entering right about here suffering some drawdown and then getting a pretty small win in the grand scheme of things conversely let's see the trades we missed out on because we were being good and disciplined and having the cloud tell us what to do it starts here look at this amazing trade Price crossed downward, but price was above the cloud. We can't take shorts of prices above the cloud. So there was no chance at all of us getting all this. Now, I know some people might have exited here. That's fine. That would have been a small loss. But regardless, there was zero chance, if we obeyed the cloud, to get any of this. And then over here, price, I'm sorry, the line crossed upward. That's a long a little bit of drawdown, but then all that right there had no chance of going into our pockets. So it saved us from a good loss here. That's fine. But we just missed out on two really big wins. We'd have liked to have those. And then over here, another short that we're not allowed to take that would have ended up being a really nice trade. So if we obeyed the cloud, we would have been one for one, which is really good. But would we have come out ahead pipwise? Almost certainly not. Because even though this thing kept us out of a few small losses, it did not allow us to participate in any of these big wins. And you're going to see this in your testing too. It can be very frustrating. And guys, we are daily chart traders here. Wouldn't you like to have more than one trade in seven months on a major currency pair like this? I would especially if they look like this, you know? So again, really good for beginners to show them discipline where most beginning traders have absolutely none. But when you're at a little more of an advanced stage and you can start taking more trades, this cloud in all of its forms just doesn't have any use to traders like me. I can't find enough ways to have it give me great trade entries and it just gets in the way of too many trades that I really want to take. Look, we are trend traders here at No Nonsense Forex. I am a trend trader. And many of us have gotten to the point to where, where we can enter trends a lot earlier than most trend traders can. And because of that, we do not want restrictions like this. So sadly, the Kumo Cloud, which so many people love, just has no place in my trading. And then there were two. So some of you might already know where this is going. Some of you might have been doing this before this video even came out. But we spoke in the last video we did on Ichimoku about how these two act as the moving average crossover portion of the Ichimoku system. So how do we best approach that? Oh, wait. I've already done a video on this. Did you guys watch the video? I'm going to put this in the description, too. I showed you a trick in this video that works almost every single time you do it. And if we were to use it here, we might just come up with something good. Let's take a look. Back to the Euro dollar daily chart, we have isolated the Tenkan Sen and the Kijin Sen. The red is the Tenkan Sen, the faster of the two. The Kijin Sen is the aqua, the slower of the two. So, if we get rid of the cloud and the chiku span and just do nothing but pay attention to the moving average crossover version of this indicator system, let's see what we come up with. All right, so let's pull up our crosshair. Where's the first trade? Right here. So not, I don't think right here, it didn't officially cross through. It didn't do that until right here. So you would have had a short trade here and that was a terrible loser. All right, so not off to a great start. Then you didn't get a whole lot until right here. This would have been a long. And once it fully crossed, you would have been at this candle right here. Again, you are selling at the bottom. You are buying at the top. 
Not good at all. Where is our next trade? So we only got three trades on this whole chart. And this one looks pretty good. You got separation officially right about here. All right, and that would have been a nice trade. But one decent size win so far and two pretty bad losses. We certainly want to do better than that. Now, if you remember the moving average crossovers video, you know exactly what I'm about to do. In that video, I said to stop worrying about the crossover part of moving average crossovers and just take the slower of the two and enter trades when price crosses and closes beyond it. So we're going to do that here, and doing that involves me getting rid of this red Tenkinsen right here. So let's do that and play this out. Now let's see what we got. Enter right here, a short when price crossed and closed beyond it. That's a winner. Anytime, especially on the euro dollar when things were going so slow, if you, could, if you can get 100 pips out of it, you pretty much won. You certainly didn't lose. So that's a winner. And then let's pull it back up. It's hard to see. You might have to zoom in a bit, but we had an entry right here. And what do we get out of that? Uh, somewhere in the 80s. Possible win there. But a really good win right here, I can tell you that much. Enter here. That's a good short. Right here you had a loss. You would have gone long here. And what I talked about in that video too, um, or in the video right after it, is how you would exit a trade if price went the other way and crossed below it. So that's going to be a, an immediate loss of a whopping 20 pips. But then if you would have taken that trade, because this is a short entry signal right here, let's see. This would have been really good. Really nice. And then back up this way, another win, entering here. I mean, you're hitting hundreds all across the board here. Short, Another 100. I mean, when do you want me to stop? I mean, I could just keep doing this. There's a small loss right here. The losses are small. And the wins are nice. Almost 100. Kind of a not-so-good loss right there, but then right after that. Now, I know there's other factors that go into this, but just if you're on the surface, if you're just testing these pieces by themselves, and we just did that on the same currency pair, on the same time frame, out of all the tools that we just tested within Ichimoku and all the methods we use to test them, small as our sample size is, we have a clear winner here. It not only won, it won big on the absolute shittiest pair in all of Forex to trade. That's pretty impressive. And as many of you know, when you have a good piece like this and you add other pieces to eliminate some of these losses, you can take those losses right off the board. And what you're pretty much left with are nothing but these nice, clean wins. This is where the magic can happen, traders. Ask anybody that has gone through all of my material. This is how you get it done. Take something that's already pretty good, strip it down for parts, see if there's a piece we can actually use, and if there is, hang on to that shit, because it is worth the time it took you to find it. And you didn't even have to find this one, traders. I found it for you. So when it's all said and done, there is one left standing, and it is a great piece to have. So let's talk more about it so you can put this in your notes for those of you who are taking notes. The Kijin Sen is the big winner here. It's a great baseline. The baseline video was the video I shot after the moving average crossovers video. I'm going to include that in the description as well. If I lost you a little bit when I was testing it out on the screen, it's because there's certain rules you have to follow with this thing, and I laid it all out in that video for you. But this baseline, ladies and gentlemen, is one of my top 100 
indicators. So what I want you to do, if you want to use it yourself, don't adjust the settings. It's perfect just the way it is. If you are going to use it, make sure you have watched that baseline video and pretty much make sure you've watched all the material up until now. I want you to get the most out of this. And that's really hard to do if you're not familiar with how we do everything here. I'm also going to include the beginner's video down in the description, whether you're a beginning trader or not. If you're unfamiliar with our way of trading, I'm going to give you a really good guideline in that video on where to go first and what to watch first and how to progress through this the right way. We look for traders that are totally into stuff like that, that are meticulous and want to learn piece by piece. Because again, you can ask any of them. Uh, the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow can be really, really tremendous and really worth all the time you spent watching those videos and taking notes and testing indicators and things like that. But also, as good as this thing is, present day, I don't use it anymore. And I want you to always be looking to constantly improve on something like this. If you don't have a very good baseline, feel free to plug this in. I think you're really going to like it. It might not play super well with your other indicators. You might have to make adjustments there. Or it just might be something that's not for you. But at least give it a try. But if you keep it, I want to make sure that you don't get complacent and just say, okay, I'm going to use this the rest of my trading life. Always try to improve because once I did... My trading got even better than it was before, and I am absolutely thrilled with the baseline I have right now. But I did some damage with this sucker. Believe you me. And I hope you guys do too. So in conclusion, you can trade this thing however you want. It's totally up to you. You, know, you want my opinion. You came to my channel for my opinion. I just gave it to you, and I try to do my best to put some evidence behind it. Um, but just understand, just in general, whenever you have a all-in-one system of indicators given the fact that most indicators are trash and now somebody's saying you must use all of these in conjunction with each other it's really not going to be the way you want to go Ichimoku got it right to a degree again it's remarkable how well that entire system has held up but moving forward into your advanced stages it is always to your advantage to look at something like that and test each part individually and find the best thing you can come up with. And if you can't come up with anything, that's fine. But I just happened to come up with something really great and I hope you guys can use it in your trading. There's actually, I'm gonna add this too. I, got, I just gotta go find it. Um, give me a second. Okay, we're back. I found it. Uh, I'm going to take you to a place where you can download um, an indicator on MT4 that is just the Kijin Sen. So you don't have to make any adjustments or anything like that. I found the place where I got it, and I'm going to take you to that place in a link below in the description. So you can just go download the Kijin Sen on its own if that interests you. But uh, try it as a baseline, traders. I think you're going to really like it. I know some of you were already on to this. I saw you all talking about it. And uh, I got to say, bang up job if you're already a step ahead of us on this one. But for the rest of you, enjoy the Kijin Sen. I hope it makes you lots of pips. And if you have not done so already and you like the way we break things down, whether you totally agree with me or not, get on this channel. Subscribe and hit the bell. I know a lot of new people to this channel are finding us for the first time through the Ichimoku videos. This is how we break everything down. We don't sit there and tell you everything's awesome because everything is not awesome. It's about elimination. It's about getting rid of the things that drag other traders down. And once we've done that, finding those few precious tools that actually work really, really well, putting them together with other tools that work really well, and creating a system that is damn near unstoppable. But one thing no-nonsense Forex traders are not is lazy. Traders, you have something really great now that you might have not have had before. Take it. Run with it. You know exactly what to do. Put in the work. See how this thing incorporates into your overall system and go get it.